Uh, I'm Ali Salman, I'm Executive Director of Prime Institute, and on behalf of Prime Institute, we, want, we welcome you, Senator Isaac Khalsa, Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, for joining us uh, in the opening session of Pakistan Prosperity Forum. Uh, Prime Institute is an independent private think tank which we established about 10 years ago. Uh, the uh, idea behind Prime is to promote the ideas of market economy, economic freedom. Um, and especially talking about open trade, uh, the role of the government in the economy. Um, and this is our second prosperity forum. And last year, we organized the uh, Pakistan Prosperity Forum here. Um, and we invited uh, Dr. Arthur Lapper from the US uh, as a chief uh, guest. And, uh, you know, uh, we talked about uh, what needs to be done in terms of Pakistan prosperity. Um, and in terms of today's uh, format, it's a bit different. It's not a regular speech format. Uh, we thought that we have a conversation with you um, along with Ali Kizar, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with his name. Uh, so it's a joint effort by Prime Institute and Business Reporter, uh, supported by uh, two foundations, Fed Economic Foundation, Atlas Network. And we also have our very fast friend, Rizwan Rawadi from Belgium, uh, who has traveled from Belgium to attend the work. So um, with your permission, I, I can start uh, the, the conversation. Um, so, so basically, I think we have a set of questions which uh, me and Ali Khazar would be posing uh, to finance staff. Um, so first of all, I'd like to you know, come back to the one of the most challenging situations uh, for you as a finance minister, which is uh, the, the taxes and tax reforms. Uh, in the previous government, when you were finance minister, you set up tax reforms commission. I think recently you also set up tax reforms commission. So I wanted to ask you if you have uh, uh, you know, considered uh, lowering of tax rate and broadening of tax base is, 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 and, uh, uh, because this is a constant challenge. And uh, we are of the view uh, as a think tank, we have published books of uh, what these view, the ideas that if we can, you know, make the tax structure more uniform, minimize exemption, reduce the tax rate, it's better for economy and for the economy. So I'd like to start the conversation with this question and hear your view on the tax. First of all, I'm grateful uh, to the Prime Institute and uh, the partners for holding this uh, Pakistan Prosperity Forum and uh, inviting me to this August gathering. I hope I can uh, share my frank ideas here. Uh, first of all, uh, before uh, answering whether we can roll the tax rate, we know there is a constraint. Particularly when you are with the IMF program, you are both chance of lowering your rates because you've already projected your, your income and the uh, you know taxes collection based on set of rates and that is obviously rolled out to the budget. So uh, surely in the long run uh, one has to see lowering the rates but uh, you know post pandemic I have seen uh, the, most of the developed countries also increasing their tax, their, uh, tax rates uh, in, in the western world. So I think this is not the time that uh, we can expect to lower the tax rate even if the IMF was not there because the, the post covert uh, uh, you know era and then unfortunately uh, the catastrophe first catastrophe Pakistan faced surely would not permit any lowering of the rates what we need to do I mean we uh, we have uh, almost doubled our uh, fiscal deficit over a period of last four and a half years can we afford it what fiscal deficit means is to borrow the money to finance uh, your budget. So if you are going to borrow the money, it will add to your debt servicing. And while uh, you know moving on, it will further complicate the situation. So I think under the circumstances, first of all, we have to raise collection. Yes, if the collection uh, of taxes can be raised with reforms, which I have already set up again recently, a commission wrote resource and reforms the mobilization commission. Surely you can look for a reduction in the rate in the forthcoming budget. But you know the the obviously still the results are known. I think it would be very risky business even to consider. And as I said, uh, you know that once you are on the fund program, you have no no possibility of lowering your uh, your uh, tax rates. But 
if you can demonstrate, and I have been uh, approached by certain segments of the industries that they compare that when the rate was higher, uh, the collection uh, is now as compared to higher rates, the collection is lower or stagnant. So in, in such situation, one can obviously raise a fund and uh, with the data and the proof, so we can consider. So, you know, it's a very specific method, talking of a broad, broad based, you know, reduction in the slab and the tax rate, perhaps uh, it's too early. Uh, just to add on, yes, we understand we cannot do the tax rate, but we can broaden the tax base. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, uh, the, 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 there was a tax on the traders, which was a very nominal tax. But again, our party leadership has asked the Mitra Sam to remove that. So, what's your view on those tax on traders, real estate and uh, wholesale, and the sector which are funded by? And on track and trace system, that is to enhance the documentation within the tax sectors. Well, uh, you see, I support uh, the track and trace system very well. I'm the one who actually triggered it. And I'm glad that uh, it has taken a good shape in uh, certain uh, areas, particularly, for example, sugar, and now maybe in beverages and uh, tobacco and etc. Uh, it will certainly produce. You see, we have uh, uh, multiple problems. We have, uh, we are, we have under reporting. And we have uh, non reports. I think that both are to be addressed. Those who report, they under report, and there are a large number, as you said, the broader the tax base is to, is to, is to sort out uh, the, under, the, you know, the uh, non reporting. So, you know, we are always uh, yeah, cognizant of this thing, and I think uh, this, this needs to be uh, perhaps focused more. Uh, we did double our tax collection between 2013 and 2018, if you recall. And uh, if we could have moved on on that, uh, you know, uh, progress and uh, the percentage increase, perhaps today we would have uh, crossed eight, eight, 8 trillion rupees, which are not yet. We're still talking of this year, uh, 7,400, which is the fifth year. Uh, that's the target. So, uh, surely, uh, I think I agree with you, the broadening and, the, and also the, uh, and the enforcement in order to, uh, you know, catch the under reporting both need to be addressed. In, in, in the last tenure, uh, 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 there, there, there was a cautious move from the side to move towards uh, the collection of taxes at the imported stage. In 2013, it was 41% of the taxes were collected, uh, even 39, and uh, by the time you left, it was 47, 48% that were collected in imports. Now, imports are falling, and uh, we know why, and that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's hampering the tax collection as well. So, you do need to uh, correct this structure. Well, let me first uh, touch this issue and it will cover maybe most of your supplementary questions. We should first of all, and I think this forum should take an take a, uh, initiative, we should must analyze and postmark what happened between 2017 and now, when this country had 2% food innovation, 4.6% uh, CPI, 6.1% GDP growth, Highest, uh, you know, reserved in 2016 uh, before uh, some adventures started in this country. Uh, fifth best performer, uh, performing uh, stock market in the world and the, and the best in the South Asia. The most stable currency since, since 2014 till uh, in December that some slides started. So I think let's see where, where we are today. As a consequence of that, it's not a Pakistani organization because sometimes, you know, they say maybe it's sponsored, but it's a JETRO. Can anybody question JETRO who was saying that Pakistan is likely to be the second choice of place for the foreign rental investment? Can anybody challenge the price for those corpus projections? We said that Pakistan will be hitting the economy in 2030. Now, are these not hard facts? What happened and why we have reached the point now we are today? That is creating serious uh, issues for this country. And it's a very, very deep problem that now we are, we are projected to be a 46th economy in 2034. And we, we can see that uh, what's happening to the inflation, what's happening, it's not uh, uh, two months or eight months or me or myth or anybody else. It is the, uh, you know, collective mismanagement and, and, and you know, failures on the part of our economic management since uh, last four and a half years. So it's, it's unfortunate. So I think that that needs to be addressed. Indeed, sir, there is a mismanagement in the last five years. The mismanagement was much better. 
In 2014, this is the prime intuition and business reporter. We did a, 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 a conference on the debt, and we, we predicted that 2018 will, will be that trapped. There'll be a situation what we are facing today. So, yes, uh, we, we were wrong over the timing, but on the outcome, we are right. So, at, at that time, there was no uh, bigger government, but it's <coughs> much longer and a structure. So, instead of like, uh, you know, much slugging one or the other, they are much lucky. Yes, we are not here to much lucky, we are here to post modern and see and introspection and make ourselves uh, move to the right path. So, you know, there's no politics. Economy has been, I have been campaigning in this country since 2030 when I presented the first version chart of economy. And we did present three years medium term, uh, you know, budgetary framework. 14 charter of the economy, three years medium term framework, 2014, 17, 15, 15, 18, 16, 16, 19. This, you know, you guys who are, your partner are, a, a, you know, a media house. Why don't you campaign? Why don't get others? Force the, force the political parties to come on charge of the economy, have a roadmap, have the public with 230 million people as a witness. I mean, I was author, one of the author, four authors of the, the charter of Democrats. So you see, now coming to that, I, I wish that you should have then meticulously followed your theme. And what happened? We reached to 25, just under 25,000, 25 trillion public debt, and debt and liabilities, 30,000. Now, we stand, we stand after uh, uh, four months, we, we left at 25,000, 44,500. Please correct me, my figures are wrong. And 30,000, we, because we loved to go abroad, hold uh, investment conferences, and tell them we are a debt trapped country. And tell them we are a corrupt country. And tell them come and invest in Pakistan. Only a region will come and invest in Pakistan. So just please bear with me. The 30,000 figures went to 54,500. Now, this is an unbearable increase in the debt. Why it happened? There are two reasons. A, the fiscal de the deficit went uh, to, to, to sky, and the B was left, uh, you know, free fall. And as a consequence, we had 4,000 billion also added to our, uh, to our uh, public debt because on the external side, which is $20 billion, and the exports only increased the, all those gurus who used to campaign. That is, the rupee is, uh, is uh, allowed to slide. And move according to the uh, you know market mechanism. So the exports will go sky high. I wish it, it would have gone, and I would have been happy as Pakistani. But it's only increased the first three is eight hundred million. It is the tough four hundred million that the the state has given subsidized loans, and the industry mass uh, five hundred four five hundred billion. With that, uh, actually, you have now increased the export. You see the formula which we followed in 2017-18. I'm sure your record will bear me out. 10th of January 2017, after the fund program was over, we calculated what is the uh, input in every component of product, uh, the, the taxes in, in, you know, component of that. That was about 9 10 rupees. We gave 10 rupees, we gave 180 billion package, then we upgraded when uh, uh, there was a change in Prime Minister in this country, Shaisa Khan. I gave another 67 at the request of the industry. We got 12.7 percent increase. If you had followed, that model, you would have got your, you have saved yourself inflation, you have saved yourself from going to policy rate of 14%, which uh, the country was having uh, debt servicing of 17, 50 billion. Now you're talking of about four and a half thousand billion. Now this is, what is this? Not risk management. So I, I think that debt is, is a very important. I agree. I have said that. Let's do from a, a, a different angle. The law in this country was obviously self introduced. Uh, the debt responsibility and, uh, uh, you know, uh, fiscal, fiscal swan, the debt, the debt limitation act. I triggered it. I brought our cousin from World Bank. They normally do not allow to go to your own uh, country. <laughs> President Wolferson request, you know, asked me that if you need any human source, we understand your whole work. So I, I said, give this man to us. We started that. This good thing. We imposed ourselves, you know, 60% when the law was rolled out, obviously, after the coup. But you see, then we campaign worldwide that we are, we are debt trapped. Can somebody tell me what is the uh, US debt to GDP? 110%. UK after post COVID, 101%. Japan, 257. I never see any politician or any media house talking there that we are a debt trap country. Is this the difference is that they can print dollars and they can print sterling and they can print yen and they can't and we can't and then rupee is not the global. See, let me, let's, let's please, for heaven's sake, the politics must be detached from this, uh, uh, from this, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, economy. It, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm being sometimes emotional. But I, I feel hurt. The country which was going to be part of G20 in few years' time, there should have been collective effort to reduce the timeline. And it would have been possible with the speed we were, the country was moving on. But somehow, you know, we are there. Uh, it's never too late. I think you campaign with your media partners and colleagues. <laughs> Please force us that you go on that right on that path, have start of economy, and move the country back to where it was 2017. Right. I think this is very important, and I recognize, we recognize that you have been uh, championing this cause of ch uh, charter of uh, economy for many years. And uh, on behalf of uh, at least Prime Institute, I can commit uh, that in the future, in the next, uh, you know, we uh, uh, going to elections, uh, whenever we go to the next elections, we will be actually working uh, on the charter of economy and we'll come back to you uh, with your uh, inputs and of course other political parties would be involved in that process also. Um, and and so I think this is very important. And moving on, I just want to, you know, you mentioned about the currency um, and I just want to pick up the, the sound money theme. You know, I, uh, I know you're, you're very, uh, also sensitive on that point, but I just want to hear your views on this association between strong currency and strong, strong economy, and uh, what are your current thoughts, especially about now we are in, the, in this IMF program, so, and how do you navigate uh, with your uh, pregnancy? <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, let, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, trying to take credit on everything, but uh, let me remind you, uh, Pakistan was on Texas till October 1999. And after the sanctions, Putting, fixing the economy. Fixing the economy. It is we, our finance minister, the PMLN, which actually started 8020, 2080, and then 100% market base. By in the first quarter of 1999, first time Pakistan went on interbank, what we call real effective exchange rate. My problem is that. In any, any system, it's not only Pakistan, there are certain speculators, gamblers, hoodiewalas, who take the country's currency as a hostage. If the state does not come in play, I think then what will happen is what has happened now. See the recent, uh, did Bank of England not intervene? <coughs> did Bangladesh did not intervene? India recently intervened. Why? India could afford out of 600 odd billion reserves and throw 98 billion in the market. We don't have that luxury. So we, we have to make sure that these abuses must be checked. And I think the multilateral have to understand this is neither Bank of England or Federal Reserve that we can afford that if it goes outside the band or below the band and they intervene and spend whatever they spend or buy whatever they buy, we have constraint of foreign reserves. So the only tool you have is the, you know, making sure that such things do not happen. We have recently started operation. Just as of last 24 hours, we, we our, our customs have, have caught one single person in, in Chamal border. $100,000 uh, he was uh, smuggling, is, a, is being smuggled across the of the world, border. Can we afford that? We have the lead small, very, our urea, which we import, and the local price courtesy as a cheap uh, provision of gas to those fertilizer companies, obviously the cost of, uh, you know, produced and the manufactured the fertilizer is less. But when we import, local price is 2,600, the imported price is 6,500 to 7,000. So we subsidize because obviously you can't sell the export. This is imported is section seven thousand, and this is imported is two thousand three hundred to the farmer. That imported, which means the, the one loss is foreign change spending. Second loss is the subsidy which the state is giving, and the imported stuff is being smuggled out to uh, uh, neighboring countries and from neighboring countries to Central Asian states. You see, these these are the things. So I. So I, we have left the, uh, uh, you know, the currency on its own natural flow, but the speculative part has to be checked. As I said, you know, we have launched operation. There's a huge uh, smuggling of your US dollars. You're buying uh, uh, coal 
from a neighboring country in rupees. The rupees come to Pakistan territory in Peshawar or other other uh, borders, and they buy your dollars and pay 50, 20 rupees extra. So, you know, these things are we checked. So, it's, it's, uh, these things are happening ever since Taliban took over in Afghanistan, their forex reserves have been frozen. <laughs> and uh, by interested that you left the, uh, uh, the currency on the market. If that is the case, why we have seen rates in Pakistan, interbank rates, open market rates, and the more rate where people are buying. And then you and you and I know everyone. Who has money in Pakistan and trying to buy dollars and limiting outside Pakistan to illegal? Yes, yes, yes. Other sir, uh, there are two, two, two uh, parts of this, uh, uh, you know, question. One is the three rates. I think there are only two rates as of now. Interbank because the he declared money changes rate is very close uh, to that rate. One two rupees. If you go to sell, they will give you that that there, rate. There are two rates with a gap of twenty five rupees. No, 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 no. You, you. I hope you don't increase by the time I need to fifty. So uh, you see this, uh, the, the, you see they, you go to sell, they'll give you that rate. But you, when you go to buy, unfortunately, the speculation uh, has has hyped to such an extent that they will do private deals, maybe at home, your office, and pay ten fifty. Is the main cause is basically lack of confidence, and I think we are not trying. We are just creating more, uh, you know, anxiety in the system. And all of us, you know, if we all play our, 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 our you know, our role, due roles, I'm sure we, we can overcome. Hypothetically, many people say that uh, Darsa will, you know, leave it open and let it be at the grey market. Can somebody guarantee me that if it goes to the grey market rate, that the uh, grey rate will not another 20, 25 rupees? I mean, it's, 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 and let me tell you, when I said that gave public statement, uh, you know, a couple of few weeks ago, or almost two months ago, that it should be 200, the read, calculated read was 194. It, it is about 100, uh, because what, uh, 94 was at 232 rupees, yeah, but, and 220 it was 92, so it's, it's about 100 now. I know, it is 100, but at that time, did it come to 200? The speculators did their game. And so, look at the Bangladesh, what did they do? They closed 40 or the uh, uh, money changes. They got, by, by the state got removed six of the biggest banks, treasures, very heads that they are responding. All, all uh, the food, no, no problem anymore in Bangladesh or India. India had to spend money. They had to uh, spend 28 billion dollars of foreign exchange to market. So they did through market intervention, a state, but Bangladesh did not like we did in 98 99. So I think we, we, we have to see the national and the financial interests of Pakistan. That should be foremost for all, all of us. Okay, so you said that state bank is not like uh, Bank of England or Federal Reserve. So, what is your view on the independence of the state bank and, and the autonomy which has it got in the last 30 years? I think it's gone too far. So, what is needed to be done? You see, why my country should have, the central bank should have the growth as the last priority? Show me a few countries where the growth is last priority. Do you want do you if you come when, when, when the when we come to the bridge, we'll, we'll decide how to how to cross it. I think that's complete the program. I am you see, we are committed, so we will we will deliver. Uh, the only program which was delivered in Pakistan was 2036. And uh, never before, and it will be my endeavor, no matter how difficult uh, conditions, unreasonable commitments have been made in the past. I would like to deliver even on those so that we complete and have the credit that Pakistan completed the program second time. Because it is a bad thing. So you said that my, you said last night on TV that my intelligence view of the IMF might be combined. If that is the case, how would you live for the next two, three months? We are living, we have been showing how to live. There is an example of two, two persons. One who has a, a salary of 100,000 doesn't have a bank balance. So they, they, they carry on four weeks, they'll, they'll, they'll go to use things on credit and when they get the salary, they pay. So you have managed the cash flow cash management. The other one is having the same salary, but having maybe one million in the bank, bank uh, uh, account. So we'll draw from the other. So you see, we are, we are not in very easy, normal business. is not as usual, but it's not the doing of uh, these two or eight months. It is the legacy which has been inherited due to Cross mismanagement. I'm not. I don't want to blame politically. It's not a matter. Of, it's a matter of misgovernance. It's a matter of mismanagement. We should not. You see, the core. You know, the core thing is 18th to 40th or 46th economy. That's that's it needs to be postmodern, and we'll have all the answers. 
And second biggest problem is that we could not raise our revenue. Third is that we could not control our expenditure and live within means. And as a consequence, you have a huge fiscal deficit and that is being added to your loans and uh, plus the depreciation. So we have to see that it's a very simple mathematics, but if you leave it uh, open the way it is, then it go to any any number. Sir, so the way fiscal federalism in Pakistan after the 18th amendment and 7th NFP award, 57% plus of the revenues goes to provinces. And what is left with uh, the federal government is uh, not on uh, not enough to pay the uh, debt servicing. If interest rate comes down, then it would be able to pay the debt servicing uh, and probably defense and pension. Still, there is no spending on that. So this is unsustainable. The taxes uh, uh, which should be collected by the provinces are not there. The devolution to Turkey didn't happen. So uh, uh, do you think we need to roll back some of this or as an emergency case or we need to move to the third year? Because you see the provinces are strong, federal government is not, and that's making the situation very extremely vulnerable. The, uh, thank you so much. I think uh, uh, very uh, uh, valuable and candid uh, question. I think uh, uh, through the last NFG, not the 18th Amendment, 18th Amendment was later, but uh, let me speak. I was involved in, in both in the first one indirectly. Uh, we had I left the government already, you know, within six weeks. But obviously, as you know, consultation uh, as well. A, we shifted the uh, the resources from federal to provincial too fast and too much. Uh, it was actually not fifty-seven and a half. The federal the federation used to collect uh, federal government five percent collection charges. And then the remainder would be divided 57 and a half and 42 and a half. If you, if you recalculate of the total pie, it's almost 60% to the federal government and 40% to the provinces. It has virtually reversed now. It was the collection charge was reduced to one, the last energy, just give wo postage post stamps and roach the other. I refuse to go there by the way for this postage stamp. And uh, the the for 57 and a half reverse to the other side. So virtually federal government is having 40. And the provinces are having, uh, including the adjustment of the lower uh, uh, admin chart is 60. Now you're absolutely right. And I think that they will need to find a solution. So far, the NFC which is supposed to be every five years has not been able, we have not been able to find right. The constitution says that once given, you cannot take back. That's another issue. I still believe there are, there are, there are solutions, but obviously I have not shared those solutions here. I tried those solutions uh, 2013, uh, uh, 40, 20, 14, 17, so that we come up uh, to take care partially this problem. But obviously, even my own uh, provincial government in uh, Punjab would not agree. Obviously, you know, they, they want more money. This was followed by 18th Amendment. And the idea was that the social sector and uh, health, education, et cetera, should be shifted. The entire expenditure and mainly the, the development expenditure should be picked up by the province. Unfortunately, uh, despite the conference this was abolished, you have seen that all those ministries in some form have re-emerged in the first form. So you're still bearing those uh, advancements. Secondly, you're still carrying many programs, which actually now be stripped or censo uh, finance because they are much bigger. You know, 20% of uh, of uh, the divisional pool is a lot of money. It's almost one fifth, you know, extra going there and reduction there. So this problem is there. I have few ideas, but uh, you know, if, uh, internationally does everybody agree? Otherwise, maybe I have to come with, with, with something which will be very drastic. Will this be integral part of the charter of economy? I would, they, listen, we, I will, I will ask uh, an indirect question and a very benign one. Is the security only for the Islamabad or the security expenditure for the entire Pakistan to defend me? So I think it's a fair that some, some contribution has to be from the from the divisible pool, from the cross. And likewise, uh, uh, the debt uh, servicing. So these are two big, big expenditures. Do you think non compact defense expenditure should be curtailed in Pakistan? The things here never get curtailed, you know, once a given is never larger, you can't take it back. So we have to find some uh, way forward, some solutions. And uh, uh, I'm thinking too, but it's too early to just uh, give. Oh, be before it will start, it will be killed. So I think I better keep it to myself. We'll, we'll think some out-of-box solutions. 
but I think solutions have to be there. Otherwise, uh, this debt will continue to balloon. You will continue to be having higher fiscal deficit unless you double your uh, income, but still 60% still go to the fund. I agree. It's a very important point you have made. I just like to move to the last section of uh, our conversation and maybe we have a few minutes uh, for questions. The last part of the question is about the expenditures. Uh, you know, BMNN government is credited with the protections of economic reform act back in the 1990s. Uh, you were champion of privatization. Uh, you, you managed to, uh, to bring down fiscal deficits. <coughs> but now we are talking about the public expenditures, uh, which is rising and, and the floods have become a major challenge also uh, post COVID situation. So I know that you know, uh, this reduction of public expenditures is not easy. However, given the resource constraint we have um, and the sort of basic resources on such the SOEs, I, I just want to hear uh, your views uh, going forward on reduction of these expenditures, SOE reforms, and, and where we see uh, on your agenda. Well, uh, I think uh, uh, it's a very important uh, area you're, uh, you're touching. Uh, surely we need to. Uh, privatize uh, whatever we can privatize to uh, stop the bleeding and uh, an extra burden on the federal budget. Uh, we are in the, that process. We have tried to, uh, uh, you know, finalize some transactions, but, you know, there's a, there's a long process in our system. Uh, and everybody who works uh, in these uh, uh, departments and or uh, divisions, they, they most of them have got scared of from that. So this is, a, this is nobody, uh, you know, wishes to work. Because even if they do with the complete 1000% honesty, they, 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 they feel scared that tomorrow they'll be called and ask, you know, multiple questions. So having said that, uh, yes, uh, we have to, uh, the expenditure you see, in my opinion, uh, very less flexible, particularly on your uh, running of the administration, uh, the current expenditure, your, uh, which obviously includes the debt servicing, there we have a room, in my opinion. But the security, Facebook you know, as I said, that normally, you know, you, you yeah, I've not seen like anything going you know. down except in 90 post uh, detonation. There was a, a, a symbolic reduction of 7 billion. I remember negotiating with General Musharraf at that time uh, in the expansion. So never, I haven't seen that ever there is any any decrease in the, in the, in the defense fund. So the test survey does have a room. If we can manage to control the inflation, which we started in 2013 and we managed to reach there, where the inflation went down to 5.2, Your, uh, your so, sorry, 4.68. So to give a the positive, uh, you know, rate of return, the policy rate was 5.25. Imagine even today, if, if it was around 6%, again 16%, how much would you save, you know, in terms of debt service? There is a space. But we have to put them economic, macroeconomic indicators, uh, uh, you know, on the right direction. And once you do that, obviously, that's the, the only, or increase your revenue, which is your first question of that, broad base, etc. But that here is a space where which we can certainly, uh, provided we can bring the inflation down, which is obviously very high right now. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, we have like uh, this five minutes because. Uh, Shrar has a meeting with the Prime Minister. Uh, I would invite Dr. Mansoor in to pose a question. Uh, if that be very quick, just a question, no comments, please. And then we'll... no comments. Uh, thank you, Prime Just two points. One, building and uh, uh, when you're short of resources, you have to go for a property. One of the first things we did was to get my second question was if you did this one for the world, I think that's right, but previously, when you took over whatever on the airports, we were collecting 37%, the budget and the budget was 49 So we are afraid that these subsidies will be collected as indirect taxes and customs, etc. And once again, there was a similar one in 2014, uh, you know, this reform, and they came out with all sorts of additional duties, regulatory duties, and since then, our reforms have never recovered because you put so much tax on your reforms that nothing can come, nothing can go out, and, and that goes a never authority. Let me ask you both questions. You see, subsidies, look uh, who is being subsidized, first of all. 
you think that uh, the your neighboring country has uh, around 300 euro tree you can't afford it and i think it's a, it's a it's a responsibility of the state to look after those uh, who are the lowest uh, in terms of income who can't even have a living uh, meal uh, i think we will be heartless we just said no there is no subsidy so target is subsidy i agree with you the subsidy should be targeted and that's what the even the multilateral say that the subsidy target is acceptable to that so we try to stay within the targeted subsidy and uh, that is only for the for the for, for example the flood uh, you know effectives uh, sorry uh, uh, if the, the, on the one side you are campaigning that export should be increased and their imports have gone cost has gone up now when after my is given if electricity on a on a fixed rate which actually compensates them for the for the, 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 the com, different government dues on their, uh, their imports uh, imported component of the exports so <laughs> it's the same thing so you see we, we did give them we calculated in the three months of exercise in, in uh, uh, september 2016 uh, to december 2016 and it worked out to be around 9 to 11 rupees different products 9 9 50 10 so that's why we gave them every 10 to be you know per product per dollar they earn at that time then we you recall one 80 million so i i agree so, but you see you can't just ignore that because subsidies uh, will cause a burden then perhaps tomorrow somebody will say close this uh, social safety net program what is the need of income support fund to be given so i think we should be uh, you know balanced uh, in our approach and we should we should allocate whatever we can conveniently allocate and i remember this income support fund i, I introduced in 2008 cabinet and it was a national income support fund the blue budget uh, yeah, blue uh, print of the budget which i left when i resigned in the middle of may because the judges could not be restored it, it was 34 billion and the uh, national income support fund uh, was announced in that budget amount was not changed but that the, the, the journey to, it traveled from 2008 to 30 34 billion came to 40 billion when we had 2013 we been substantially increased we increased the number of families we increased the, the uh, quarterly stipend i think they you know state owed to them we all owed to them who, who simply cannot live without that so we increased to 144 billion at that time now it has further increased so i think we have to create a balance uh, 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 your your second question the obviously the exports we should obviously do whatever uh, you know facilities we can give to increase the exports and i think the turf was a was a scheme whereby 400 billion at that very uh, you know super, i was almost nominal 1% rate was given this day i have no issue with that but they also added up for 500 billion so that's why you got uh, export increase of 4 billion dollars uh, due to that so that, that is a, that is an area i think we should aim at if we can have 12 to 15% of gdp uh, 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 in export uh, we are in business we don't have to uh, you know depend on the external uh, borrowing i think uh, uh, mansoor sir and pervez sir and we will have to close mansoor sir the two good questions in the middle okay we set up the country's first knowledge and innovation center at last in 2002 and you talked about out of the box we have uh, missed hundreds of startup companies who have left pakistan millions of dollars worth they go to america and europe because we do not have a very well defined sustained arbitral structure for innovation economy in pakistan few of our startups are unicorns to the question we are so the question is would it matter that if we have a uh, independent Minister of Innovation, you know, because we have small Mr. YT Telecom doing a little bit of you know innovation, EC ones. Then we have ATC for universities. Now we need to go vertically up. Sure. And instead of even Pakistanis investing in real estate, how do we attract them right. and get to tech companies? That is the prosperity future of the world. Thank you. Uh, yes, so you're absolutely right. I think we have a lot of scope, in my opinion, in the IT uh, sector. We can uh, grow and export, and there's a lot of. Uh, so we are looking into this how we can facilitate uh, your proposal as to a uh, Ministry of Innovation. We have right now, you know, in one of the division special initiative, 
is a planning, development, and special initiative. If there can be perhaps special initiative can be renamed as innovation should be separated and one division can be <coughs> broken into two. But uh, I, you know, I've taken your uh, suggestions. I'll share with the with my colleagues and private. So, well, I have a question. You don't have problems. In the misdirection, in the misdirection, people are using you know the excess stock of one point two million tons of sugar. They can earn nine hundred million dollars. They have delayed it. the dollars. And still, Ministry of Food Security is delaying it, and unfortunately, farmers are going to suffer. There's a you know high rate of sugarcane has been proposed, and the sugar prices are low. Farmers will not be paid. So why eight to nine hundred million dollars without subsidy? And we have a next time we have a bumper crop, and it's not. I'm not discussing. You are not doing it. It's a Ministry of Food. Please, it's a very serious situation. Things will go very bad. Let's and let's today, I'll, I'll tell you the CSS. Today, they called me for a meeting at two o'clock. In the morning, I get a message. The meeting is at eleven o'clock. Well, they are not serious. Please take the shoes in your hand. Thank you. Very, very after Guruji, please uh, take back leave from uh, the yeah, organizers here. Do attend that meeting, and you have been part of certain meeting that I've held on this account. Yes, First of all, let me correct your figures. 1.2 million at the current rate will not get you 900, it will get you 700 million dollars. So you are out by 400 million dollars in your numbers. <laughs> just let, just let, let, me, let me first, Raji. It's a dispute between you. I have taken presentation. You are there, National Food Security. We should not be talking in this large crowd, but now I have to because you have raised a question. I'm, I'm just now, I'm duty bound to share. They say that your production next year uh, will be 6.2 million to uh, 3 million, and you claim you mean your industry, not you individually, 8.1 million. So either party has to prove, and you know they have been trying that we should give it some some start. See what is the production crushing season has started. I'm doing my best, but obviously I cannot overtake the entire government. I'm not the prime minister of Pakistan. I uh, I am responsible as the chairman of ECC to try and coordinate. So you have seen the uh, uh, making efforts and I'm not receiving your efforts. Yes. <laughs> 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 please, please, you uh, attend to Kare. Uh, we are meeting at Kare. We will make a big ring. Right. The, only, the only problem is why this has happened again. Everybody is cautious the scandal which happened in the last four years of this country. We have been given a he as a witness. I have been giving export permissions, but the price domestic did not increase. It remained 52 to 54. We got about 650,000 metric tons between, as you know, 2013 17. There was no issue. But here, a new government comes without closing their eyes, not checking the, the stocks in the country, and allows 1 million, and then allows another uh, 200,000 to 200,000. And there's a chaos, and there is import. I and mean, there's a scandal. Hundreds of billions of rupees have been siphoned off. By whom? So you see, that's why national security is probably cautious. They don't want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, jump in the same boat. So they are they are extra cautious. And uh, you know, uh, you know, I am supporter. And we, we will, we will, inshallah. I think why do the sugar daddy always take? It was my turn. I have a question. Last question, Pravesh Sahib. Jana, Jana. Last but not the least. Jana, for all. Very simple question. Ji. Why does federal government spend money under PSTP in provincial domain? All PSTP is debt funded. So why should you spend money on things that the province should be doing? Secondly, why should be doing PISP as federal government now? And finally, when IMF is mentioned to you at uh, the crab shows, as I call them, or this guy mentioned, why do you get emotional? Just state your point of view. We don't <laughs> want our finance minister to look back and back and back. Look forward. You have an opportunity to fix the structure of the economy. Please focus on that. Man. And don't be detracted by. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much uh, for your candid advice. Uh, when it comes to Pakistan, I become emotional. Whether I'm in opposition, I am in uh, London, I'm in Pakistan. Uh, so uh, I have paid a price for being emotional and imposing fiscal discipline on those who never accept fiscal discipline in this country. 
perhaps I'm the only finance minister, and perhaps never before, never after me, somebody will come. And I have paid a, paid a price of five years back now. So I'm, I'm sure you're very privy to that. So I don't mind. It is for the country. And I would advise to every finance minister that he should think that he owes this to God Almighty and the 230 million people about it. Unless we impose it, it should start from me. It should start from, from uh, my leader. And I did this exactly 2013. The Prime Minister of Pakistan used a 43 billion testation grant. You can pick up the PSD, you will find out that. I made it feel on the first budget I presented in five days. On 12th of June 2013, the Prime Minister Destiny Grant was made zero. The Federal Minister Destiny Grant was made zero, including myself. So if I can do that, that is, then I will always extend the similar discipline to everybody and across the board in the country. If somebody doesn't like it, I can't help it. Only, only then we will go, we are actually reaching where we reached 2017, but that was very hard discipline. And very difficult path I have to, I have to tread, and we reach there on there. That means country has a resilience, and we can do that. So, the first, the first one, I, I wish the supers should pick up all this development expenditure. They should. You they, have the power not to do it. So that means that neither we do it nor they do it, and the public gets uh, ruined. You see, this is the problem. You think that, that these all these uh, mega projects, the dams and the motorways and the highways would have been there if we have defended, if we have been dependent on the supers? No, I'm not talking of motorways. I'm talking of. Let's start with the cross talk. your point is well. Thank you so much, Bairam. Uh, I wish that Jitri Jandi ho jaye to you know it is a it is a win win for the federal government and the budget because we get relief. We don't we, we don't spend, but. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, you know, raise it to the public and let it be known to the provinces. I hope that, you know, it doesn't fall on the deaf ears and they understand and they, they, they follow your very good advice. Thank you so much. Uh, Narsan, we have to speak to you. Yeah. The room that we're not talking about is basically, you know, uh, iconic Pakistan. Yeah. I can't find one. The, yeah, where is there? Um, dealing with the IMF. Either you deal with the IMF and make sure that we get the, the uh, reviews done or we uh, that gets delayed and we try other other ways of, you know, getting finance. Yes, so, the, so yes. hai ke, uh, those channels will not be amenable without the IMF review, uh, review in place and on board. So it, wouldn't that be better to get that done? Ma 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 uh, I don't blame the fund, but uh, let me first of all say that the ninth review in totality all performance criteria in order. Had they come in October and uh, reviewed, uh, the ninth review would have been over. Uh, I don't want to indulge into uh, global politics, but uh, I did request them to come uh, end of October or early November. They chose not to. They, you see, we are to be blamed. We created credibility gap. As a country, when you commit with agreed conditionalities, you should think many times at that time, but not later. Once you agree, then you should implement. I think it's honorable and uh, ethically, uh, contractually, you are bound to implement. Uh, again, unfortunately, one has to uh, you know cite the why it has happened. So, having agreed a roadmap, your country and the previous government chose. Not only not to implement, but to reverse what they had done early, right? So that has created credibility gap, but don't blame fund. Now IMF wishes to see, keeping in their experience, the not, not only the this the, the previous quarter. Normally they see when they come, you know, the how the things are running in the current quarter, which is not under review. But now they want to see all the next three quarters. Okay, fine. I'm ready. I'm transparent. I'm prepared to provide them that whatever we think is the, uh, is the is the reality as of now. Now they have extended their uh, uh, their uh, uh, you know uh, request or demand that we also demonstrate how we would meet the needs of 16 billion dollars required for uh, reconstruction rehabilitation phase uh, post flood. Now that is. Not more than 100 billion rupees will be spent in this year. There was a uh, rescue and uh, immediate response requirements of around 90 million, which has been paid to the budget. Uh, 70 billion cash, you know, 25,000 each through ISP transparent way that will distribute it. But also, the reconciliation rehabilitation will take at least five to seven years. So, if it's going to take five to seven years and worry now, but 
nobody can obviously they say the lenders are uh, <laughs> the beggars are not the chooser. I won't say that, but the lenders have their own wish list. So uh, little bit, I, in my opinion, unre unrealistic, unreasonable. But since uh, my endeavor is to complete the program, let Pakistan have second time credit that they completed the program. We are we are known in the in the world that we are few trans country. We run away after. That's why the programs have stopped being front loaded. You remember that in the beginning, the program used to be front loaded, and you, you would have a good chunk of money, maybe half of it uh, in the front of 40%. And then the right now, they spread it equal on the 12 installment because they, they're scared that after a few chances, you might run away. That's what happened in the past. So, our program is the first one. I wish Pakistan a credibility case. We complete this program as well. That's why, despite um, I might personally disagree with many things. But I'm trying to provide anything and everything. My team is on that. And I think we should try to complete you very rightly said. Because the global uh, financial health certificate giver is, is the fund. So no matter the money is not big, but obviously the, the other institution now follow. If you are on track, then obviously yeah, they do business with you. This is this is a big constraint as well. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Jeevi. We have to conclude the program now. Uh, the federal thanks to the financial. for your time this morning. I know that you're running between the meeting and you know, you're the most sought after minister in the whole country. Uh, but we're very grateful for your candid conversation here. I'm sure uh, we will take many of these ideas forward and particularly your chapter of economy. I assure that we will be carrying more focused efforts in the future. Um, and uh, definitely we'll come back to, to you on that. Uh, to end, I would just request uh, 